Okay, so I first you give the permission, okay? Um, yeah, you can. You can. Uh, this is for your use. Yeah, my name is Muzaffar Ahmad. What's your name? I'm Gary Sly. Okay, sir. Continue, please. Um, so this is the main throat of the volcano where it goes down into the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's over here um, at the Hali Ma'u Ma'u Crater. Mm. And then you have what they call the rift zone. It's like a giant crack in the earth that runs for about 100 kilometers or 60 miles. And anywhere along that rift zone is where the lava can come out of and flow on the surface easily. This is the Putin O'O vent on the east rift zone. And that's where the lava was coming out of for over 35 years. And so you live in 35 years at here? Um, it was coming out of, yes, from January of 1983 until August of 2018. Pretty much continuous activity, and that's what covered all of the area that is out in, that you can see for lava, all the lava you see out here. We're right about here where I put the X on the map. Now, the flow I'm going to describe is the heavier red line on the map and that was flowing for about two years. So it changed course where it was coming out of the Pu'u'o vent in May of 2016. Started coming down the mountain. This is the morning we made it to the base of the mountain, about four miles out this way. Mm -hmm. Now there's these little areas of green that were missed by previous lava flows. And um, so those are uh, lower than the surrounding area because the surrounding area built up with lava. So invariably when a new flow comes down the mountain, it'll go and start to burn some of the few remaining trees that we have out there. Eventually it burned all of the trees in that little island that was missed by previous flows. This is the morning it started to cross the highway out there. It eventually covered over three quarters of a mile of the highway as it was, uh, as it was moving towards the ocean. The next day it made it to the ocean and started to drop off the cliffs and form this new land out there. All of this new land is very unstable. Pieces of that can collapse and fall in at any time. Eventually, all of this silver area built up out in the ocean. Now, if the lava finds a path or a channel that it's happy flowing through, as soon as it hits the air, it will start to cool and solidify on the surface. Basically, it's starting to turn into rock. If it keeps flowing in that same path or channel, that rock crust that forms will get thicker and thicker, until eventually it becomes self-supporting and it creates what they call a lava tube. It's uh, like a cave that it forms for itself to flow through. So it formed that lava tube or a cave all the way from the Pu'u'o vent all the way to the ocean entry, about seven miles. So when I took this photograph it was basically under the surface in that tube and you couldn't see it. Well then on New Year's Eve of 2016 all of this new land collapsed and fell into the ocean along with some of the existing coastline. 26 acres in all fell into the ocean at that time. When all of that land fell into the ocean, it exposed that lava tube that was supplying that ocean entry. So here you have the lava shooting right straight out of the cliff, out of that tube, and dropping 60 feet into the ocean below. This is called a fire hose. I've been here for almost 15 years. I've never seen anything quite like this out there before. Here you have another view of that. You can see how thick that lava had built up above that fire hose. That insulates the lava, keeps it much hotter, more fluid. It can move much easier through that tube then because of that uh, fluidity. You have a person in this photograph to give you a, spot, a, a size perspective. And here you have the 42 foot long boat to give you a size perspective. Now the tube system with this flow was very weak, it kept breaking out of those lava tubes. And so when it would break out of the lava tube, we'd have surface flows out here. And so at night when it would get dark, I'd be able to see those red rivers of lava from here. Now uh, this flow was uh, going on for about two years, and I was able to see those red rivers of lava at night over half of that time. Then we started having the events that ended this flow and started the one that you heard about last year on the news. So while this flow was still happening, you had a lava lake inside of the Halima'u Ma'u crater, and there was a lava lake inside of the Pu'u'o vent. Those uh, lava lakes would go up and down at least once a day, and they would fluctuate up to 30 feet in elevation. Well, for all of April last year, while this flow was still happening, those lava lakes were going up all the time. They weren't coming back down. 
Then we started having hundreds of earthquakes a day, up to 800 earthquakes a day. Mm -hmm. So you knew the pressure was building inside the volcano. Well, then on May 4th last year, we had a 6.9 earthquake, and that's when everything changed. So once again, you have the rift zone that serves as like a conduit for the lava. It goes from 4,000 feet elevation down to sea level. There must have been some blockage in that rift zone that kept it from going any further downstream than the Pu'u'u'u'u vent. So that's why it was coming out of there for 35 years. That 6.9 earthquake removed the blockage so the lava could start moving downstream again. Uh, the lava lake inside of Pu'u'u'u'u dropped out of sight. The lava lake inside of Halema'u'u'u dropped over 1,000 feet in 24 hours and kept going down. So basically the dam was broken all of that lava could start moving down to this area where I put the red on the map. Now this map is a blow up of where that activity started. So you came in here on Highway 130, right here is where you cross the rift zone. Now you might have noticed there were some uh, steam alongside the road when you came through. Yes, I see. Right after that 6.9 earthquake, cracks opened up in the road right there mm -hmm. alongside the road. And they closed that road down for a while, and we had to drive all the way around this way to get up the town. No lava came out in that area. It moved under the surface over to this area where these fissures started opening up. A fissure would be a crack with the steam and lava spatter coming out of there. There were 24 in all that opened up, usually only two or three at a time were doing anything. Uh, kind of kept moving all around. Finally, fissures number 20 and 22 started flowing lava. It came down here, crossed the highway, and went into the ocean for just a few days. Then that stopped. It all concentrated in fissure number eight. That came over here and covered all of this area in lava. In just three months' time, it covered over 13 and a half square miles of land with lava. This white line is the old coastline. It added 875 acres of new land to the island in those three months' time. So it's added, huh? Oh, added, yes. Yes. Uh, the Big Island was getting bigger at that point. Yep. <laughs> now, it burned over 700 houses in that area in three months' time also. So this was putting on quite the show. Now, when uh, the lava goes into the ocean, it will cool very quickly and fracture and break into smaller pieces. Sometimes it's exploding. Um, sometimes it will have gases inside of the lava. And those gases inside of the lava will keep it uh, floating in the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of that debris that's floating in the water is slammed against the rock cliffs by the strong wave action that we have. And that grinds it all up and creates black sand close to where that lava is going into the ocean. When I was up in a helicopter the night before it stopped flowing. This is fissure number eight where that was coming out of. These are some of the other fissures that were still off-gassing. A few of the houses that were uh, missed by the flow. Um, this is um, uh, that river of lava again coming out of fissure number eight. And this river of lava was one to three hundred yards wide and it built what they call a perch channel. So on the sides of that river of lava it cooled and solidified and built uh, what they call a perch channel which is uh, like a levee or a dike that uh, holds that lava in place then. That levee or dike or that perch channel was um, about 30 feet high at, in some places and that river of lava was moving through there at 18 to 25 miles an hour. It was like a raging river going through there. Now all of that um, debris in the water that created the black sand um, once again, this was the night before it stopped flowing from a helicopter. This is the leading edge of that flow. All of that sand from that flow front was brought into this bay by the strong um, ocean currents. So where we have, usually we have rocky coastlines all along here. This is a huge black sand beach down there now. Um, this is the boat ramp. There's a pool of water at the bottom of that boat ramp, but it's cut off from the ocean by that huge black sand beach. So you can drive into this park and you can see that uh, um, brand new beach and you can see, uh, um, you can walk down this road and you can see where the, uh, the lava crossed the road here. So you can see that wall of lava and you can see where this uh, flow stopped uh, the next day right about in here. And um, 
So this is probably the newest beach on, on the planet at this point in time. So now I'll, maybe I'll wait for these folks. I have a, a, yep. a, a book I go through and... Uh, yes, and you have the pictures, huh? Make by the lava. <laughs> Nature create the land and you create the picture. Huh? <laughs> Hello. How are you? So yeah, you know, all of these, uh, I sell 8x10 prints of uh, m most of these photos that you see in the posters here. I sell the posters and I also sell a DVD and, and I'll go through the, the book with the DVD and um, I'll try to explain uh, some more things. Hi. Hello. How are you? Great. Just coming around. Welcome to the room, I should say. <laughs> I'm, I'm Gary, by the way. Nice meeting you, Josefina. We're here from Southern California. Southern California? Southern California? Yeah, How can anybody live in Southern California? <laughs> <laughs> People usually ask me how can anybody live out here. Yeah. <laughs> how do you sleep at night? Oh, fine. Yeah. I, um, I've been living here for most of 15 years. I've been able to watch most of this lava out here flow um, within about five miles. And my house burned down in 2010 from the floor. And uh, it was about 300 yards over this way. Um, I have 21 acres, and so I was on the other side of my property at, at first. And um, um, a couple of reasons I. Um, Oh, my, Some people are watching there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate if you don't take photos of all of those okay. because I sell those. Um, so, um, 